I'm gonna try this again. Take two. So I went to the range today and I shot 200 rounds out of my 1911s. So today was 1911 day. This is my 22 TCM. Uh, it actually comes with two barrels. I have a nine millimeter barrel as well. I've never swapped out a nine millimeter barrel. Um, I've always shot 22 TCM out of this. So I shot 100 rounds of this today and specifically I shot not just 22 TCM, I shot 22 TCM 9R. That's the first time I've shot that and I'll explain why I shot with that in a, in a, few, in a second. Um, and I actually took this to the range. So they're both the same length, uh, four, four and a quarter inches uh, in length, barrel length. They're both arms core, uh, Rock Island Armory uh, 1911s. Uh, both, again, both uh, mid-sized. Uh, this one shoots uh, nine millimeter. It's a nine millimeter barrel. Um, I shot a hundred rounds of Wolf, 115 grain out of that. So, uh, so let's go back here. So, why did I use 9R instead of regular 22 TCM? Because I have one magazine that that'll fit the 22 TCM ammo, the regular. 22 TCM ammo. Uh, I have four magazines for this gun. So one that came with the gun, that's a Rock Island Armory sourced uh, magazine. It's actually a think metal metal form. Um, and three Wilson Combat uh, 9mm uh, 1911 uh, magazines. I've used those with this in the past uh, without issue. So my thought was, and there's a bug in here. Um, so my thought was that, okay, well, 9R ammo is actually used for, you know, uh, arms core sells those uh, uh, 22 TCM, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, convertible guns. Uh, you know, they have them for the Glock. Uh, so what they wanted to do is they wanted to, Developed well, they developed TCM ammo that would fit in regular Glock magazines, so a user wouldn't have to go out, you know, they wouldn't have to buy specialized magazines to shoot this specialized ammo. So, what they did was they shortened the 22 TCM a little bit to make it fit into 9 millimeter magazines, right? So, I figured, okay, well, I have four. 9 millimeter, 9 millimeter 1911 magazines. I do not, since I have four of those, and technically I should be able to use those in this because this also shoots 9 millimeter ammo, right? If you put the, the 9 millimeter barrel inside. Um, so, so there should be no reason for me to have to go out and buy uh, another 38 Super or, or a couple of them, you know, magazines or even. Uh, to buy arms cores magazines um, when I already have four 9mm magazines that I could be using so what I did was I decided okay well let's go and you know I, I bought Cabela's had some uh, uh, some 9R ammo so I bought it I think it was like 26 bucks uh, a box um, and that's not all that much different than the last time I bought some uh, locally. I think I bought some at two other places locally and uh, it's small uh, gun stores and uh, they uh, they were twenty five ninety nine. so Cabela's was a dollar more so in the big scheme of things I don't think there's that's a huge difference there um, you know a lot of people kind of rant saying big box you know big box uh, uh, gun stores uh, you know don't don't buy from there well you know what it's hard to find 22 TCM ammo around here in the first place. Um, and the, the other place that I bought it from besides this, you know, of the, of the two local gun shops, one of them is closed now. So, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to hate on a gun store if they're carrying something that's usually hard to get locally. So, uh, so there's that. So, um, I didn't have any hiccups firing the 9R ammo from uh, the 1911 magazines and using it with the 22 TCM. No issues whatsoever. Out of the 100 rounds, it was flawless. 
big flames, which is cool. But uh, everyone knows that the TCM shoots big flames. Oh yeah, uh, two uh, two or three lanes down, I heard I I heard someone shooting something. It sounded like twenty two TCM. It was a guy with a five uh five seven, an FN five seven. Uh, nice gun. But uh, from there, you know, from firing the 100 rounds of Orange Core uh, ammo, I shot 100 rounds of Wolf ammo from this. Uh, of the 100, I had one stovepipe. Uh, with Wolf being cheap ammo, uh, that's the reason I bought it. Uh, I think that's not bad, especially with this being 1911. Um, I will admit right off the bat, this is dirty as hell it's really dirty and I'm going to the range again tomorrow to try and get some more practice in probably taking the same guns uh, which means I'm gonna have to clean this one before I take it back out it is it's filthy um, I wasn't ex I wasn't expecting anything less so so again with a uh, and I think I might have mentioned this before I mean open this here and you're not gonna be able to see it with this uh, webcam but there's something like do you you know, Wolf must use some type of medium uh, inside their gunpowder. It looks like glitter, but if you look really closely, it's more like sand. Um, a little bit annoying. So, one thing I'm noticing, <laughs> a lot of brass uh, pinging right there. Yeah, I believe you can see some of it. That's always happened. Uh, a lot of people say that means that the, the extractor might need to be tuned. I'm not sending this back to Arms Corps. As long as it shoots, I'm fine with it. Um, it wasn't beating me in the head or anything like that. Now, the wolf, I took a couple to the head. Um, and what it was doing is it was shooting out of the gun. And it was ejecting out of the gun with, with authority. Uh, and bouncing off of the booth and coming back and hitting me in the head to the point of where I actually went to my bag and grabbed a hat. Um, technically, well, I usually put on hats anyways because I got burned here because a uh, hot brass came and stuck between my glasses and my head. And talk about hot. Yeah, that shit was burning and I could not get my glasses off fast enough. I almost flung them off just to get that hot metal off of me and of course it yeah it, it left a big blister and everything and whatever but uh, um so i shot 200 rounds between both guns and only had one uh stove pipe uh lots of sparks from the wolf ammo um i didn't notice any slow slides anything that hinted at uh, undercharging um, I didn't notice, notice anything uh, anything you know along those lines with the wolf sometimes with wolf because it's cheap sometimes you notice things like that um, I didn't have any issues with that um, neither with the TCM uh, the last time I took it out the wife and I fired I believe like maybe not quite 50 maybe 50 rounds yeah, we didn't have any issues then, but before that, um, I had a problem with an overcharge, and I, I think I might have talked about that. Um, I don't, for some reason, I didn't put it in my blog, um, but I actually have a picture. the The overcharge was drastic enough to where it didn't damage the gun, it didn't damage me, but um, it blew the primer out, and then it, it expanded the brass to the point where I couldn't get the, uh, I had to retire it at the range with the brass still stuck inside and I didn't want to carry it home it wouldn't have fit in my uh, in my uh, pistol rug with it with the open action and everything so I let the action go which was stupid because then it was locked in place I couldn't rack it back um, finally what I did was uh, I used a, a rubber mallet and I, and I held the gun sort of like this and I was tapping on it real hard and uh, finally it broke loose uh, but then after that I still had to get the dag on uh, the brass out um, 
that took a while as well. Um, it didn't want to come out with a wooden dowel. Finally, I found a, a, me uh, a, a metal rod and I put it inside the uh, the uh, the barrel. <coughs> I had to, I I'd gotten the a whole gun apart where I just had the, the actual inner the barrel itself, not the slide or anything, just the barrel. And uh, finally, I was able to knock it out, but it, it took a while. Um, that's the only uh, I must have shot probably close to 400 rounds out of the TCM. That's the first time I've had such an issue, and that happened when was it last October or something. So um, I showed my <sighs> I like to show my targets. Shot this at seven yards. Almost all of them are seven yards with the exception of my last uh, chart uh, target. Um, you notice most of these are shooting to the left. Um, in fact, this is a hundred rounds of TCM 9R. Um, I got to maybe the last 40 or so rounds before I finally started nailing up in the white here and uh, actually in the red up here. Um, I figured out what was going on. At first I was getting upset because I'm like, maybe it's a sight or maybe uh, maybe I, you know, I need to actually get the, the gun sighted in. No, it was me. Um, I'm so used to hinged triggers. Uh, that you know, when when a when a, a trigger's running on a hinge up here, <clears throat> the mechanics of you pulling your finger, uh, I think I'm more used to non uh, 1911 triggers. So what here's what I did. I, I kind of I got upset at first, and then I kind of say, okay, stop, stop what you're doing. Pay attention to what you're doing. So. I figured okay well maybe I'm pulling to the left or maybe I don't have a proper side picture so I first I, I made sure that I had the front lined up in the dots in the back here um, and then I was uh, making sure that I was doing very slow and steady pulls because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with, with what I'm doing right um, so I slowed everything down and started just kind of focusing on certain aspects of what I was doing um, so I figured, okay, well, I think I'm doing this right. My breathing's okay. I'm using both eyes. And then I said, okay, well, I started noticing that the way I'm pulling the trigger is not right. Like what I was doing was if I'm pulling like a non 1911, if I'm pulling the trigger, that's when I noticed the gum would start moving a little bit to the left or whatnot. So what I did was I took, I went to the first notch in my finger and I actually put my finger right there. Usually I shoot like this with the with my fingertip or toward the middle. Uh, this time I put it right at the notch or right before the notch. Right, damn it, right here, right here. And once you know that made a huge difference because Here's what I found. When I do that, I can actually pull. Let me see here. I could. Act, it, it allows me to pull straight back. You pull straight back. It's not going to alter the alignment of your gun, or or your sight picture or anything like that. So pull straight back. So if I do it with my let me see if I can, uh, okay, if I do it with my finger, okay, that, <laughs> I was watching, I was watching uh, to see if my, I guess the uh, muzzle would uh, would move, it didn't, uh, but I, this, that's the only way I, that's the only thing that could have happened at the range, so uh, once I started doing that, I found that I started nailing them, uh, or, or it just, not on a consistent basis, but I, that's something I have to work on. Um, 1911s have always challenged me in that regard, but they're still fun to shoot. Um, so after that, I whooped out the 
9 millimeter, 1911. That's the first thing um, out of a. Uh, no, this is the last. Uh, this is the one I started shooting. So I started here and then went here, 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 and here. And if you notice, they're all very good. So I'm, I'm not hitting where I want. And uh, this is at 10 yards. So I actually moved out. Uh, so my very first shot was in the red. So, and I, and by that time I kind of had, had in my mind, okay, well, I need to pull straight back. And I nailed the red from the, in the very first shot. And of course, after that, I started kind of scatterbrain. There's actually two there. Um, so I started kind of scattering out. They're not really all that far from each other. Whoa, one, two, two over and two down all in that area so still not bad not a bad grouping um, each one of these are 10 so down here you can tell some of those were off but uh you can see that the grouping start getting smaller and here every single one of those landed on paper every single one of those 10 um, and the grouping is it's pretty damn tight um, so I just need to work on my trigger pull and and take my time and if I take my time and just keep nailing keep nailing and keep nailing what's gonna happen is it it's gonna become grain ingrained in you know my head and muscle memory so my last one this was another one at 10 yards and uh, I was trying to use up the rest of the wolf ammo this is the one where I nailed when on the first shot this is the one that I, where I took my time um, and then I think these are two mags. And I was kind of rapid firing here. And that's still not bad for rapid firing um, at 10 yards. Um, I, I don't think I've ever been past 10. I've, I've, I've only just in the last two range visits started using 10 yards. It's kind of, okay, let's have a little bit of fun. Um, and the difference is drastic enough. It depends on what I'm taking out. Uh, the grand power does not like, or I could say it's me. I, I don't know. Uh, I've always had issues using the grand power way out. Uh, seven yards is good for me. Uh, anything beyond that is usually a challenge, and and more so with the grand power. I don't know if it's just the sights. The sights are very small. Um, small sights means that you can be a lot more accurate than with regular size dots um, but sometimes they're a pain to see and plus uh, with the smaller they are you know when you're moving around and things like that it's just it's it's more of a challenge um, and then these last two here I had two rounds left and instead of just putting in putting them in the bag I decided to try and shoot um, so not bad so um That was uh, the first couple of mags. Still not bad. I was hitting the red. This was at seven yards. And uh, we're at 18, 19 minutes out. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about safety. So when you're at the range, try and notice, especially if you're in, in an indoor range, if, you know, if you're taking someone to the range that's new to firearms, uh, watch them closely and be ready to immediately uh, intervene when something kind of unsafe happens. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is because today, <clears throat> while I was at the range, I'm firing and I feel, and I just got there, and I feel this, it seems like it's small, but it felt like someone hit me with the a marble sized ball bearing in my stomach yeah it came back and hit me and at first I, was, I didn't know what the hell was going on I'm sitting here and I, I just let off a few and all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting ready to pull the trigger again and I you know kind of feel something hit me in the stomach and I'm so I'm like what the hell and, you know, and I'm like what the hell is this and the first thing I did was I kind of looked down to make sure I wasn't bleeding or something 
and I wasn't but I looked at my shirt and this was sticking on my t-shirt and what is this it is a large piece of uh, copper jacket yeah um, so the safety part is uh, there, there's I'm gonna go through and mention uh, some some key points here um, this is a reminder to always wear safety uh, lenses safety glasses you see these uh, videos on on YouTube sometimes where people are at the range and they're not firing you know they're they're firing without glasses and if someone in the comment section mentions it and the guy will say oh yeah um, I was in a rush and I forgot my glasses so they decided to fire anyways right so uh, yeah this is why you should always have your glasses um, so another thing is I figured out where this came from it was the guy next to me um, so the guy when I came in and I was getting set up the guy was firing I didn't have a problem with that uh, he came he had a friend with him um, the friend was new to firearms and the guy was instructing him but what he would he should have noticed immediately where this guy was firing at and immediately corrected him he didn't do that uh, otherwise I wouldn't have got hit not once but twice so when I felt this I stopped what I was doing and I started trying to figure out where the hell it came from I couldn't figure out where it came from but after a while watching this guy next to me I started to suspect it was him so I I didn't want to fire anymore in fact in fact I almost left um, so I decided okay well I'm not gonna fire anymore I'm just gonna wait wait until he gets done so he gets done then his other you know they swap guns and I feel a bit safer and then I start firing again right and then I feel another one hit my arm and I uh, looked down to make sure I wasn't bleeding and make you know and seeing if it was stuck on my, my arm and it wasn't and then I looked at his target so I noticed a couple of things uh, the first thing was as he was firing I'm looking at his target whenever the projectile would hit the target you know it would punch through right and you see paper fly everywhere but then I would see something actually hit my target too and so I'm like what the fuck um, that's not paper that's flying from his to mine and hitting mine because it was ripping through my target as well so I'm like is is he using like a frangible what the what the fuck's going on um, so when I when I looked up I noticed something that I hadn't seen before so the first time I looked I was looking at the target um, and I just happened to kind of notice that there there's a splash plate on top of the mechanism that that trolleys the the, the target back and forth right uh, and it's to prevent people you know uh, get stray rounds from image you know from tearing up their machinery so uh, I noticed that there was one splash and I you know I didn't attribute it to this guy because I, I've seen that before with other people um, you know mistakes happen right so the first time when I, when I got hit in the stomach that's what I noticed uh, the second time I you know I you know and I looked up there there was another one so this guy was having problems controlling the gun to the I don't know how the hell he was shooting up there and he didn't do it not once but twice so that's what was causing these these copper fragments to come back and hit people. Um, that's bad, very bad. And I was I was kind of livid, but uh, and, and that second time it hit me, I stopped too. I stopped and was kind of you know I was trying to figure out what was going on before I started complaining. And uh, I don't know if it was me, you know. If the guy was paying it, you know, the guy, uh, not the, the new you know, firearms fire, but the guy who actually brought him as a guest, I don't know if he was actually looking and, and watching, you know, and finally figuring out, okay, well, this guy's getting caught by copper jacket. Because what happened was I was getting ready to complain and then they were gone. They, they started packing up. Um, so I don't know if he kind of noticed and said, you know what, it's, it's time to go. Um, 
but uh yeah this shit was not fun and uh i could have mentioned it to the range officer or management but i don't know how well that would have worked since the people were gone already you know so uh no need in really complaining if if the problem is gone right um uh, but i will start paying more attention this is the first time this has ever happened to me and i've heard people complaining about that before um you know whether they're at a home range and they're too close to the plates or what but uh yeah this shit is not fun and this isn't even that there's no lead on this so uh i mean i'm, I'm safe in that regard i've heard people actually get caught by uh ricocheting metal um not not like this but uh, i'm talking like actual lead um so so it was good but uh it, this this little piece of copper um i can't i can barely feel it in my hand but it hit me with such a a velocity that i told you it, it felt like a, someone had beamed me with a marble um uh, a heavy marble what did i say a ball bearing sized marble yeah it uh it was on the borderline of, of pain uh it wasn't pain i mean in the sense where i was like like just screamed out but i did i thought i remember saying what the fuck um i i couldn't imagine me if i had you know i was thinking on taking my son or my daughter with me today i had never taken them to the range that would have been a bad experience if they would have got hit with this but anyways uh long-winded video is over 20 we're at 27 minutes um i won't edit anything out of this video since uh i'm being <laughs> i'm being lazy and two uh everything that i needed to say has you know it had some importance as to my range visit and you know that the safety factor with the uh with the uh with the copper pieces and things like that i think that all that's important um me using 9r um in a tcm i think that's that's good to know information the fact that uh the regular nine millimeter uh, uh wilson combat mags actually took it the fact that uh i used a combination of that ammo with the tcm uh with those magazines and i had no issues i think that's a pretty good significance um and the fact that this Rock Island uh, shot 100, 100 rounds of a uh, uh, wolf without an issue, well, with the exception of that one stovepipe, um, no choking, no failures to feed, no failures to fire, uh, no failures to return the battery, nothing like that. Uh, it's good. So it was a good day, and I have some cleaning to do. All right. Bye-bye.